happy Thursday and happy Facebook Lifetime. My name is Melissa Kerman with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, been a demonstrator for over 19 years, amazing, and I still love what I do, can't get enough of my craft, um, and here I am, my weekly Facebook Live. Now, September's been weekly. I'm going to take a little break next week. <laughs> More on that later. Um, it's been a really, really intense month. So, um, so much going on. I have, um, today's really gonna be about some creative play, okay? So I'm gonna show you something that I showed you a sneak peek of last week um, and how to make it. And then I'm gonna do just a little recap of uh, some of the things going on. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Mary Beth. Hi, Jolaine. Yay, so glad to see people joining in. Hi, MJ. So uh, you guys, I'm sure if you have um, been receiving my emails, listening to me on Facebook, etc. Hi, Lorley, uh, that you know I'm working really, really hard to earn the Stampin' Up! incentive trip. Now, um, I had all but given up about a week ago. I thought, oh my gosh, there's no way I could do this. And then I suddenly had, um, well, some things happened, right? One of my team members said they might have somebody join, a couple other things, and then I went, oh my gosh, I can maybe do this. <laughs> so the last week has been nuts, just really pushing hard on some things. And um, you guys have been amazing. I mean, just so much support uh, from my customer base, from fellow demonstrators, um, from fellow te from team members in my Treehouse Chicks team. So I just have to say, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you have done and all your um, your doing and, in, and intentions uh, for doing. So, um, hi Elizabeth, hi Janine. So, um, anyway, I so appreciate it and I think I'm gonna make it happen, okay? So, my, my motto, I keep going in my head, it's like, I'm the little, the little engine that could, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> That's one thing mantra going on in my head. And then the other is, I'm living on pins and needles. It's a little bit stressful here, right? But exciting all at the same time. So I'm super excited because it looks like this is gonna happen. So, um, uh, and uh, I have my little, my little chart here, which you probably can't see. So I'm just gonna tell you that uh, last week when I shared it, I was uh, projecting to be at about 94% based upon some things that I knew. Um, and, uh, uh, now I think I'm at about 98%. So earlier today, um, I projected a, um, a short, I'm short by about $900. I think I'm about short by about 500 now. These are all kind of estimates because I, I have um, an order. I think I probably, I've already put in some orders for adhesives, but um, I challenged you all last week. I said, if uh, we reach 20 adhesive packs sold, I'm going to talk about the adhesive packs, right? These are my little, this is what I'm... Uh, my adhesive essentials pack. Let me tell you what it is first. Um, it's a little canvas bag pouch. It has six different adhesives in it. Um, full pack of glue dots, dimensionals, um, tear and tape. Uh, what's the other full thing? <laughs> You'd think I'd know I've memorized this. I've looked at this so many times. Um, let's see, oh yeah, and multi-purpose liquid glue. How could I forget that? Use that all the time and a half a pack of foam adhesive sheets and a third of a pack of uh, a foam adhesive, yeah, foam adhesive sheets, and then a third of a pack of, of uh, adhesive sheets. So they're cut into four by six pieces. So, um, so you have a little smattering of a bunch of things. And it is, of course, a cute little pouch. The pouch will come white, but it's going to have an adorable little decorated tag. Um, I've discounted the adhesives by 15% to make it um, attractive um, and um, I'm also throwing in my uh, Creative Play With Adhesives Technique Class PDF, which normally I would sell for $20, so that's gonna be free. So you're gonna have all kinds of ideas for how to use all the adhesives in your adhesives pack. So that's, uh, that's what we got. Um, so uh, people have just been amazing about buying this. So last week, I think I was maybe at 10 when I did my Facebook Live last week, and I said if we got to 20, that I would um, do a demonstration of how I decorated my bag and how I decorated the tag. Well, guess what? I'm so excited to share that I, uh, last I looked, I was at 39, 39 adhesive packs sold, okay? So I, I needed a lot of sales. I still need some sales, but not nearly as much as I did because I think I've probably uh, have spent or I'm going to spend about $1,000 on adhesive. <laughs> no joke. It adds up, <laughs> which is awesome. So all those small little, you know, um, well, it's relatively small purchases of, you know, the adhesive, um, 
is definitely making a huge difference. So thank you guys. And yes, Bonnie, thank you for sharing. Bonnie, you're always one of the ones that shares. So um, thank you for reminding me. Whenever you do, I think I have to remind people, tag your friends, share with others, do it here on Facebook, do it on YouTube, wherever you're watching. Um, please share my Facebook Live video with people. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, my adhesives pack. So um, those are still available to purchase. There'll be a link in the video description here today. Um, and also on YouTube as well, if you want to still buy it, because I still, I'm still still short of my goal. Okay, so um, let's see what else. Uh, yes, and I have until tomorrow at midnight, but here's the thing. Um, if I'm short, which I may very well be short by some, and that's okay, I'm going to put in order to make the difference. I'm close enough, so I mean... Hey, it's a no-brainer at this point, right? Do I go to Norway? You know, do I spend a little bit to go to Norway? I think so. I think so. So um, it's going to happen, and barring any um, unexpected uh, things that I don't anticipate not happening. <laughs> that makes sense. Because um, uh, there, I do have a few team members that have people who intend to join under them, and that will make a huge difference because I get points for that also. All right. So enough about that. Um, what else? Okay. And I also, I didn't announce it last week because it wasn't ready, but my, uh, faux leather technique class is now ready to register for. I, I, uh, announced it on Monday. Um, that class also includes product. So if you sign up for that, you're helping me with the incentive trip, um, goal as well. Uh, and it's going to be an awesome class, like super cool projects, very unique and fun. Uh, so, uh, and I think I, did I show sneak peeks? I can't remember. I think I, I did, may have a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if I did last week. But either way, I, I, there was a sneak peek graphic in my newsletter, which you may have seen. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very fun. All righty. So I am going to face the camera down. I'm gonna, oh, you know what? Important, important thing. Um, last week, I forgot. Oh, your son-in-law is from Norway. How fun. Um, oh, yes, Sharon, I noticed you placed an order. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who has placed orders and bought adhesive packs. Um, it's it's getting me there, I promise you. That's what it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. Not quite yet. I have till tomorrow. <laughs> Nothing like right until the very end, right? Um, so uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, my brain's wandering to other things. Um, okay. Yeah. So last week. I forgot to announce the winner of the cards that we created two weeks ago um, in my notes. So um, uh, it was uh, the adhesives project that we did with uh, something I'm going to show again today, actually, um, with the with, uh, plastic wrap and glue. And the winner is going to get this in the mail. You guys may remember this project if you uh, joined in a couple of weeks ago. I also shared it last week just to, to remind you guys. So our winner is, drum roll please, Nell Thames. Congratulations, Nell. Nell is actually one of my team members, so I'm so excited I get to send this to her. Um, and she bought an adhesive essentials pack too. <laughs> actually, I think two. <laughs> so um, wonderful. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. I did not wanna to forget to do that again. Um, and let's get set up to show you some fun paper crafting. Oh, jeez. Facing the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you were seeing something weird up there. Okay, so these are the quick reminders. So the host code, if you plan to place an order, this is the current one right there. Um... So, and the Adhesive Essential Pack sale ends today, although um, if I end up buying extra to meet my goal, some of them might be adhesive, so I might have to extend it, but um, uh, just in case I don't, if you haven't gotten your Adhesive Essential Pack, you should consider doing it today. So there's the nice little look at it, okay? So uh, when I'm going to demonstrate how I did this, I'm not sure. Um, it's, uh, it's not going to be tonight, I'll tell you that, because I've got something else to show you. Um, so let's see what else. And I, and, and actually last week, um, I asked you if you wanted to see how I made the thing I'm going to show tonight. And many of you responded with that hashtag yes vellum. So I am going to show you this piece that I made with the vellum, how I did it. And then I'm going to make a project with it. Um, 
And of course, there's my, uh, so yes, and I, I things I forget. I have to write my notes down here because then it helps me remember. So for the faux uh, leather technique class, um, if you sign up you, uh, with one of the options that includes um, the, that includes the project kits, um, you will get a, an extra gift, okay? You're gonna get to pick between two things. There's an embossing folder and some embellishments. So you'll get to pick between one or the other. Um, unfortunately, if you buy the PDF only, that doesn't, you don't qualify for that. Just if you buy an option with the kits. And then there's um, a couple of add-on options for some of the products we're gonna use in it, um, the, a, a bundle and a punch, which you may already have and there's no obligation to buy the add-ons, but you can. All right, so and again, share tag, follow and like. All right. Thank you so much, Pauline. I'm uh, yes. I I can tell you this has been uh, really challenging to to uh, work on achieving this goal. I was so far away and uh, back. Oh, I guess maybe two months ago. I mean, when I first started really driving hard on this, I was only at twenty three thousand points. I needed forty. I don't know what got me in my head that I could do it, but I just couldn't let go of the idea of doing it. So, okay. So here we go. And uh, we're almost there. So I'm very excited and proud about that. So I'm going to show you the focal piece. I did a little sneak peek of it in an email just before, maybe an hour ago, and then also on Facebook. So I did put together the focal piece. So this is what we're going to learn how to make today. I didn't actually finish making the card, but I will do that um, on live on camera today. So I'm going to show you how I created this piece. And you can tell probably from looking at it that... Uh, it's very unlikely that the second one's going to turn out looking like anything like the first one. It's a very organic kind of technique, some of my favorite kind of techniques. So um, anyway, hi, Jan. I see you there. <laughs> um, all right. So what we're going to start with is a piece of vellum. And I'm actually going to play around with a couple of ideas just because, what the heck, it's so much fun to do that. Um, and I know you guys enjoy it too. So we're starting with some uh, plastic wrap, just regular old household plastic wrap. And I'm tearing off a piece. And there we go, just a small piece, not a big piece. If you use a bigger piece, you might be less likely to get it on your fingers, but um, yeah, that's kind of a small piece. We'll just kind of, you know, wing it, okay? You know what? I want it to be bigger because I don't like sticky fingers. Do you guys like sticky fingers? Let's do a bigger one. Okay, I'll we'll just start with this big one. This is much bigger, so you guys can see how big it was to begin with. Much bigger, much wider. That other one was like a third the size. Okay, so now um, let's open up this messy paper because it's just going to get to be a mess. And I'm going to put a little dab of glue off to the side. Not a ton. You can see it there. Pretty small little dollop of glue. And then I'm just going to take my saran wrap and dab it on there. So when I first do it, it's a big glob, right? So I'm going to dab off the excess so that it's not so globby. And then I'm just going to tap it all over my piece. So this is a, an, a technique with glue that, of course, um, I did not share in my Creative Play with Adhesives Technique class, the free PDF that you get with the uh, adhesives pouch. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of different ways to play with adhesives that are not just for sticking things together, okay? Makes it fun. All right, so I dabbed off the big globby part so that it would have a little bit, be a little bit lighter weight, a little bit more texture. I'm gonna let that sit and dry just a bit. I'll put it off camera over here. I'm gonna crumple this up and just be done with that whole piece of paper. I don't want any of that, that glue like getting in my way. All righty. I know you can't see this, but I'm going to put my hair up because it's just easier to do this with my hair up. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I have one that I, so I took that, uh, what I just showed you, right? Poured some white embossing powder over it when it was dry, when this was dry, and I heated it. Okay. So then I got this something like this, right? No two will be alike, but this is the one I'm going to work with now. So white heat embossing, vellum paper, right? So now I'm going to grab my water painter, and this is a little bit of rubbing alcohol in a little, um, you know, leftover accessory container. And I'm going to grab, let's see, 
So the colors that I used for this one were um, Granny Apple Green, and I just used the dark, okay? And uh, Tahitian Tide, again, just the dark, and Night of Navy, the dark. So whenever you're doing a technique like this on vellum, it's going to be a lot lighter in the end than when you start. So you really need to start with a darker color. So that's why I'm, um, that's why I'm using the darks. Now, that's what I did for this one. And, and actually, I will tell you the truth. I started doing color on the back. And I even used some yellow on the back. Didn't like how it looked. Didn't show up well enough because it was on the back. And so I gave up on, um, on the back. Some of the yellows kind of come through a little bit here, just very subtly as they come through and behind. But I'm not going to use yellow today. In fact, I'm going to use a different color scheme altogether because that's just how I am. So what we're going to try for this one is because I absolutely love the new in colors, Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, both the darks. And I'm gonna bring in a color that I don't often play with because I just like to experiment. So I'm gonna use the other in color that I've almost not used at all, which is the Sweet Sorbet. I'm kind of, you know, thinking that those might be kind of fun to see what they look like. So what the heck, let's just try it, right? Okay, so we will start with our red and I'm just going to start drawing little dabs of color here and there. Now the cool thing about uh, the alcohol markers and heat embossing is that they actually can stick to embossing powders. It's not a surface that is heat embossed. So um, it's not going to just stick in the in-between places. Um, so there's a lot of room to play with it. Now, I don't really want the colors, I don't want to touch the other um, inks with the tip of my blending brush or my, what is it, my blends alcohol marker. <laughs> Let's call it the right thing. Um, I'm keeping them away from each other, especially because, you know, then I'm going to sort of contaminate my, the tip of my uh, blends alcohol marker. So now I've got my starry sky. Who else loves these colors? Anybody else out there in love with the new ink colors? Comment and let me know. So, and if you love the ink colors, which are your favorite? Okay, so there's just a little bit of alcohol in here. I might actually need to put some in more in there. And I'm using this 99% isopropyl alcohol. You could probably get away with 91 as well, but um, generally I think I've heard that the darker ones, I'm mean, sorry, the, the higher percentage ones are better. So I'm going to just go ahead and start coloring over with my alcohol. And I'm pretty, you know, liberal with how much alcohol I'm putting on there. Now, if this were just vellum, if you've seen this um, technique, you... Uh, probably know that it moves around on the vellum, stays wet for a while, and uh, let's do this. I'm just going to get my space a little bit messy, so I'm going to start to do that instead. And I'm just one color at a time, getting them all wet and spreading them out a little bit. So I've just got my starry sky. No, that's not starry sky. The red is um, sweet sorbet. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to do the lighter of the two colors, the Orchid Oasis. Tahitian Tide and Sweet Sorbet are your favorites, Sharon. Cool. I'm a real purple girl, as you guys watch me, you guys know. So these two colors in particular, the uh, Orchid Oasis and uh, Starry Sky are very purpley, bluish, some of my favorite tones. Okay, now I'm going to go in with this into the Starry Sky, the darkest of the colors. So we went from, you know, the elements that are sort of discrete lines to 
really just mixing up the colors, blending them together, um, softening them. Okay, so you're like, where's the white back in there? <laughs> Let's do some revealing of the white. Hi, Kimmy. Good to see you here. Okay. I don't want to have the sweet sorbet, so. I was asking everybody what their favorite in colors are of the new ones. Comment if you have favorites. Okay. Let's see what we got there. It's starting to look pretty cool. I don't know that I love the sweet sorbet with the other colors, but it's kind of nice. So I'm going to actually, where the sweet sorbet meets the other colors, I'm going to mix them a little bit because what's happening in here. So they're turning, you're see, I'm seeing some purple, the colors mixed together. And that's why I was thinking that they might be nice together because I figured they would make some purples. So now what I can do is kind of remove a little bit of the color so that I can see the white again and the more alcohol I add to it, um, the more it's going to dilute it on those spots and expose some of that texture that is created by the glue and the heat embossing. You can see some purple forming in the middle there. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this, I'm going to set this aside for a few minutes. And we're going to pull something else out to play with. And then we'll come back to that when it's a little bit more dry. Um, you can see this, this is, you know, obviously super dry. It's been sitting around for a week. Um, so now what I wanted to do was, I also last week, took a piece of white cardstock, well, actually probably a couple weeks ago now, and I did my glue trick and my white heat embossing on it. I don't know if you can see the white heat embossing on there. So we're gonna do, um, actually, these three colors, like from the original focal piece, and we're gonna do those on this piece with blending brushes. The idea is I kinda want to see what the different look is between when we use, um, the blending brushes with the glue versus um, on cardstock versus on the vellum. So I'm gonna bring in the same colors that I worked with on that, where is it? Yes. So I've got Night of Navy, Tahitian Tide, and Granny Apple Green. Those are the three colors that are on this piece here. So let's just play with some blending of color. Let's see, we'll start with the green. Now the difference between this and what we did just a second ago is that the, these are water-based inks, so they're not gonna stick, if you will, to the glued heat embossed part. It's gonna resist it and then it's gonna rub off the surface. Okay. So has anybody else been to Norway? Somebody said, who said that they went, were in, had went, gone to Norway? Somewhere. I remember seeing somebody say it. I don't remember who. <laughs> okay. Ooh. So I think this is, this is really going to show the texture of the, uh, the glue. I love this color combination, too. The... Uh, Granny Apple Green with the Tahitian Tide. Okay, let's get a little more green in there. Okay, and maybe
Navy. A little Knight of Navy around the edges. Ooh, I like that. You've been to Norway, Mary Beth? How wonderful. All the Scandinavian countries. Wow. You're going to have to share me share with me some uh, tips, suggestions, <laughs> things to do. Okay, now I'm coming in with the Tahitian tie a little bit more. Add a little bit more depth to that color. Oh, I need more green. <laughs> I like dark colors. Can you can you tell? <laughs> I like rich, rich color. Okay. I think I'm just going to stop there. It's kind of an exercise to show you the difference. And we'll get a paper towel and wipe off the surface just a bit. got a paper towel and it's just a spritzer here. I'm just going to spray that off camera and then just go over this just lightly to remove the excess ink. So you can see it's getting brighter, this top in comparison to the bottom. I want to see a fish swimming in behind there. <laughs> it looks like an ocean, ocean colors. All right. So different. Wow. I like this one better. How about you guys? Anybody have any thoughts? Just kind of fun, right? So this one, you can see how some of the color covers over the white, whereas here... If I left the, the ink on there, it would just rub off, right? Um. <laughs> oh, Mary Beth, you're doing a little advertisement for Creative Extravaganza. <laughs> Anybody live near um, Dallas, uh, Texas and want to attend? You're more than welcome. We would love to have you. It's going to be all about creative play. I have so many fun ideas. I'm kind of bursting with ideas and um, have to commit and decide soon. <laughs> So uh, anyway, all right, so there's those two. Now um, let's bring in the one we started on and see what that look, that's looking like. So look how different that looks from how it did a minute ago. I think that looks so different. It's sort of draw, started drawing out. Um, I think I want to expose just a little bit more of the white. So this is the interesting thing is... And I can kind of play, oh, oh, I know what I did last time and I'm gonna do it again. Where is it? Okay, so this is another thing I like to do. I have alcohol in a spray bottle and, uh, oh, it looks patriotic. Oh, you're right, Sharon. That is so true. Okay, so I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of alcohol and then it's gonna kind of, um, I don't know, let's bring it up to the camera so we can see closely what happens. So here we go. Okay, so did you see what happened there? Some of the colors get a little darker in spots, and I think they kind of pull together a little bit. But uh, anyway, that looks pretty. Now I have to wait for it to dry again before I do anything with it. But alcohol is one of those things where it dries really fast. So one of the things I love about this method is it, you don't actually see all the you know, sort of crisp um, uh, texture in there. It's more subtle. Uh, a lot of sort of, I don't know, it just covers up some of it just enough to make it interesting, kind of cloudy and interesting. I think it's really pretty. All right, we're going to let that dry for another minute. And I'm going to put together the, um, the card 
with this focal piece that is finished. So what we've got here, oh, I forgot I have one more thing to show you. <laughs> Maybe I should do that first because it's gonna need time to dry. So I thought it would be fun to experiment with the same thing with snowflakes heat embossed. So these are stamped with Versamark, heat embossed with snowflakes, and here I'm using the Joyful Flurry stamp set, which I just love those snowflakes. So much fun. So let's do this quick here. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, okay, so for this one, we're just gonna do like the blues and purples. Let's see how that looks. Blues, because I'm thinking snowflakes, right? So I kind of want the background to look like that. Where's the blue? We got our dark blue in there. Hmm. Okay, so the, this one has navy, and of course on this other one, I'm using the um, Starry Sky. And So it, these two are what I used on the last one. So I'm bringing them all together. That's probably too many colors. Let me think. I think I'll use those three. More just like the blues. We'll see what happens. Fun, fun, right? All right, so now I got my Tahitian Tide. I'm gonna kind of do, like go fast on this one. And my Orchid Oasis. And Starry Sky. Oh no, this is Night of Navy. I took away the Orchid Oasis. That was Night of Navy that I just did. Look how bright the starry sky is. I love it. Okay. And we got our water painter. Let's bring in our paper towel. We'll steal it from the other project. And our alcohol, which Eh, it has a little bit of color in it, but I think it's okay. All right, Tahitian Tide. Okay, now we got our Knight of Navy. Being very liberal with how much alcohol is on here, by the way. And then we'll do our Starry sky. Ooh, gotta make sure not to drown out the the uh, Tahitian dye tide. It's um, that's always the tricky thing with this kind of thing is generally you want to use more of that the lightest color because it tends to get overshadowed by the darker colors. That doesn't work. Can't see what I'm doing. Let's see what we got there. You see how the Tahitian Tide is kind of getting lost in there a little bit. So let's kind of clean that up a little bit. Move some of the color off of the snowflake a tiny bit. How's everybody doing out there? Ooh, Tahitian Tide and Highland Tether. Yeah, that would be a good one too. I'm kind of obsessed with these new in colors. I can't stop playing with them. Okay, I'm gonna spray this with my alcohol. And uh, I think I wanna try to add in some more Tahitian Tide, but I can't do it now because it's so wet. Yes, I can, I can just go like that. <laughs> Notice, ooh, look at the backside. So you can see some of the color through, but not so much. Ooh, now I've cleaned it up a little bit. Okay, keep going back and forth. I'm gonna take that off camera and grab this one, which is now pretty much thoroughly dry. What if I blotted the vellum? Yeah, well, and I did actually turn it over onto this, onto the, um, paper towel. So I did blot it. That's actually gonna look really pretty. Can you see it? 
Um, when it's dry, I'm gonna add a little bit more Tahitian Tide to kind of balance it out a little bit. But for now, I'm gonna let it sit and dry. And I wanna show you how this looks on some different colors, right? So that really changes the look of the piece also. Um, all I have to do is find it, find my pieces. All right, so I've cut up some pieces that are, um, well, they should be the same size. That one's not the same size, that's too small. Um, these are all the same size. So let's look at how it looks different on the various colors. So this one was the Starry Sky Orchid Oasis and, ooh, look how that changes, how that looks. Isn't that amazing? You really see the white, okay? So now let's put it on white. This is one of the most fun things to play with. Now that looks a lot different too, right? Okay, so there's one on the white. You're gonna have like, think about this, right? See what you like best. So it's uh, what colors do you wanna bring out in the piece, right? Here you end up seeing a lot of the sorbet because it just shows up um, against that. Well, this one you see a lot of sorbet too. Anyway, it's so pretty, right? Hey, Polly. Good to see you here. Okay, now let's try it on Starry Sky. That's a little bit dark, probably won't choose that one. This one didn't have any Tahitian tie, but let's look at it for the heck of it, because maybe we want some in there. I don't know. So uh, just so you know, on this one, I put Tahitian Tide in behind it. It's hidden, of course, you can't see it, um, but it really brings out more of the Tahitian Tide on there. It might actually be what I end up doing with that snowflake one. So the, now the question is, what's the favorite? I really like that on the white. And I think I like it with the orchid. Comment, oh, you like it on the white, Sharon? Yeah, it really shows up as crisp. And it kind of needs a little bit more lightness because there's so much color on there. Yeah, MJ, you agree? There we go. I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it when people do agree. <laughs> okay, let's see where we are with this now. Now, um, I'm gonna just grab the white piece so we can actually see what we got there. And I think it, yeah, it needs some, it needs a little help. It needs a little help from a friend. That's called me. So um, let's grab our Tahitian Tide. And I wanna see it on white, so we're gonna do that. We're just gonna add a bunch of Tahitian Tide, like wherever. Cause I like the purple, but the Tahitian feels like the right color in there. So I bet you can tell this is a lot of fun to play with. I could be doing this all night long. Okay. So I'm kind of softening it where it's too intense and uh, blending it just a bit. And I want to show, I want to see some of my white in there, right? I can't see much of my white. I've colored them. But that's actually okay because I think it's pretty. What's going on in there? Ooh, look at that. I think we learned something. I think I just rubbed off some of that snowflake. Can you see it? It's not all there anymore. So interesting effect of alcohol, right? Um, oh yes, definitely go back and watch the beginning. <laughs> uh, so that, that is an interesting thing, right? Alcohol. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spray that one more time with alcohol. And uh, it's just paper, right? So. And then we'll put together that last one, or the one that's dry, and uh, we'll look at those and go from there. Okay, so here, I'm gonna get my clean space back, and let's grab a clean piece of paper to get down there. So on this, I'm gonna use a piece of this ribbon. This was on sale, I think a couple of weeks ago, the weekly deals. It's called Frayed Ribbon. I love this ribbon actually, 
because you can cut it into thinner strips and, uh, and pull off the little frayed pieces. It's a lot of fun to play with that. And I have used my time-worn type embossing folder for this one. I played around also with the brick, and brick and mortar, and the painted texture. We can look at those and see what they look like. I don't think I tried the painted texture yet. Let's see what that looks like on there. Ooh, the painted texture looks fun. I still think I like the um, time-worn type better. But just so you guys can see, it almost mimics the, um, the shape and texture of the piece, I think. And then there's brick, which I think is also pretty nice. All right, so I'm gonna go with what I initially thought would be lovely, and I'm gonna use this one. And we'll use some white glue to attach it. I do love my embossing folders. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a couple glue dots to put my little underline element in there, some more fun texture. Now, um, I don't know if this bothers you guys, but it doesn't bother me. It's a little bit off-white, but I still think it's so pretty uh, and I, again, love the texture, so I'm going with it. I need to just trim off that end a little bit. The glue dots are the best for ribbon, in my humble opinion. Okay, so there's our ribbon. A little bit off center. It's okay, I'll fray the ends and then it won't matter. Okay, now for this piece, I want it to be as high as the ribbon, which has a little bit of height to it. So I'm just grabbing a couple pieces of my Knight of Navy cardstock, and I'm gonna put them in behind, justified towards the top, just to give myself a little bit of height. It's not a lot. Um, Okay, so layer one. And this is Knight of Navy that's um, the focus, the focal piece is, is mounted onto. If you can, you can tell, right? Same color. And then we'll just put that on here. Now the white glue is also really good when you're putting something on an embossing folder because it's got that texture to it and all the grooves and stuff. So it's just more likely to stick on there. Now, when I create a piece like this, um, <laughs> I think of it as a focal piece, right? So you could use it as a background, but for me, it has so much texture and interest to it that I can't, I can't stand to cover it up. So it is the point in my mind. <laughs> so I did want to put a little bit of a sentiment on there. So I grabbed a couple of things and I tried I tried a few different um, stamp sets, but most of them felt like too big and uh, strong for it. I just wanted it to be subtle. Um, but if it was too subtle, you know, it was kind of this fine balance. So I pulled out my framed occasions, the thinking of you image there, which is really small and just, you know, not super strong on there. And then this thank you. So I tried both of those out. This is a little bit, um, you know, more, substantial, you know, as far as the thickness of the font and whatnot. Uh, so let's take a look and see what we think. See what you guys think. I'm going super simple here. So this thank you, the more, I, and I can't even call it bold, <laughs> um, or the thinking of you. Tell me what you think. Meanwhile, going back and forth. 
Oh, I know what I want to do. Oh. Okay. I have to go run and quickly get something. Be right back. I saw a vote for thinking of you. Anybody else? Oh, Kimmy says thank you. Somebody else says thinking of you. I like it when it's even. And then if I have a preference, I just pick. <laughs> okay. So here's what I'm going to do. We'll try this. We're going to um, take a little bit of Knight of Navy to the edges with a sponge dauber and see what we think of that. Now, I also stamped on this itty-bitty thin piece. It's a little bit thin, right? Just a little bit too thin. Um, Jolene, you like thinking of you too? Okay, Cause and, and tell me why. I'm just curious. We're going to sponge the edges of this one. This is a tiny, itty bitty, thin piece of cardstock. Probably too skinny. Yeah, too much. I don't like it. Nix that one. Let's see. I don't know. I'm not sure that the sponging is really a good idea. Oh, I have one on the back. Let's try it on the back. This is what I like to do. I try it before I commit. So that one is off center, right? It's not, I'm not gonna use that side. But I don't think I like the sponging. I don't know about you guys, but I think I just gotta keep it crisp. And I kind of prefer the thank you. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Ah, but do you think it's bold and in your face? I know, isn't that funny? It's, um, it's this tiny little sentiment and yet it can feel like it's bold and in your face, right? Now, the other thing I could do if this um, piece was smaller is I could stamp it on the white and then it wouldn't be, yeah, no sponging. I agree, MJ, I'm with you. Um, then it wouldn't stand out quite as much, you know? But my focal piece is long. So you can see if it was down there, then it's just like its own thing, but there's not enough room down there. So, thinking of you. Or thank you. I think I just like the font of the thank you better. And that's why I'm going with a thank you. Sorry for those of you who liked thinking of you better. <laughs> this is what we're doing. All right. And uh, maybe I'll cut some of those other pieces down, make them shorter so that I can have space below for the sentiment instead. I could also put it up top. But anyway, just super simple, right? Not... Don't want to overcomplicate this thing when you have something as pretty as that. Why overcomplicate it? Uh, okay, lots of agreeing on the no sponging. All right, let's take our other pieces here and see how they're looking um, and see what we can do with them. So I think Orchid was the chosen background for that one, which I think is what we'll do. Oh, no, somebody said bummer. What did they say bummer about? <laughs> you think the font did it? The font. Um, it's the right balance for the background. Yeah. All right. Well, I think there's disagreement with me, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Um, we all have our creative opinions, don't we? Okay, so there's this one, and I think this one might need to do on white. Let's look at it and see what it looks like. Oh, that white piece is too small. Where's the other white piece that I had? I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? It's a little bit messy. Not my favorite. Oh, there's the big white. Because the snowflakes are so pretty. Maybe I just have to sit on that for a little while. I said bummer because you didn't pick thinking of you. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I have to just fix this. It's too much, looks too much like a hole right there. Oh, and it's taking off little pieces of the snowflake again. Oh no, stop messing it with Melissa. Stop messing with it. Because it's just taking off those pretty snowflake pieces. Okay, well, I love those snowflakes, but it's a little bit messy. But you love the snowflake piece, Mary Beth? Oh, wonderful. I'm so glad. It will likely grow on me as I look at it more. 
And that's just, no, because it just gets lost. But maybe, right? So here's what I will do. On this one, and I'll show you the method. I'm not going to actually put this one. Well, maybe I'll put it together. Who knows? How much time do we have? What time is it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just, so much. Okay, so I am going to grab, shoot. Okay, quick, back. I'll be right in a second. Okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna do another thing with glue. On the back side of this one, I'm gonna put some glue on it. Which one the light blue? Light blue on what? <laughs> Is it time to go? Is it getting too late? I could craft like this all night long. I'm gonna grab this sponge. This is my dedicated, um, glue sponge, and I'm just going to dab it around. I don't want the lines. So I'm basically just trying to cover the whole thing. Make it nice and sticky all over. I'm going to get a little glue on my fingers that are holding this down. Don't love that, but it'll be worth it. Okay. Now when I do this with a glue, with a sponge, I go and I rinse it pretty much right away. Uh, so that I can keep using it. It's, you know, it's kind of a funky, funky little sponge, misshapen and whatnot, but it works and I can use it again and again if I clean it pretty quickly after I use it. Okay. All right. So there's that. Let's see if we can put some layers in behind and see what we want to do with it. <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> I love that you like to hang out with me, guys. Okay, so there's that. And I got a couple of card bases over here to play with. I don't have any layers for in behind, though. So these are all the colors I was playing with on this. No Tahitian Tide on that one. Ooh. Ooh. I love these layers. I think I need white. But, uh, White, white, white. All right, so if I put, if I did white behind that, no, maybe not. This is how I create, <laughs> just saying. So if I got like a white layer in there, I play with my layers, Let's see what I think. Let's try this one. Okay, comment if you have any suggestions for things I should bring in. I'm missing people's comments. <laughs> oh, the snowflake one, the Tahitian Tide? Let's see. I wonder if I... The sorbet, I think, might be too strong. What do you guys think? The starry sky? Starry sky in which layer? Starry sky behind this one because it's so dramatic, isn't it? Is that what you mean, Kimmy? Ooh, Knight of Navy. I forgot to play with Knight of Navy. Did I use Knight of Navy in this? I think I did. I don't think I used the Orchid, now that I think about it. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Let's try, see what Navy looks like. Oh, the navy is very dusty. I don't know that I could do the navy. Unless it's a small little bit. Let's make that one go away. Maybe. The navy, the thing about Starry Sky is it's such a bright color. And with the navy, it's just not doing it for me. Maybe it just needs white. <laughs> oh, Mary Beth, you're so funny. It's never too late. You both said it's never too late. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'm going to have a decision on this anytime soon. <laughs> this is why I, I take a long time creating. But I, I kind of like just the straight up navy or 
that. Maybe if the navy is just the tiniest bit. It just doesn't work. The navy, these two colors just do not work for me in this concept. Yeah, you're, I, I'm with you, Jolene. Yes, I agree. It just, just doesn't work. So I'm going this way. And maybe it needs a white base instead. Maybe. Nope. Yeah, Cindy, you agree? No navy? Okay, well, I'm stuck on this. Like, I got this. I don't know what else to put in there. And I don't know whether sweet sorbet would look right. But maybe I just have to get it and see. I don't know about you guys, but I am a visual person. Now, my gut is telling me the sweet sorbet is not going to look right. But you just never know until it's right in front of you. <laughs> okay, there is no starry night. There's a starry sky. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing, right? Yes, you agree. Try the sweet sorbet. Ooh, I like it much more than I thought I would. Now oh, there's talking. Maybe I should try it this way. Is this what you guys do too? No, that's not going to work. Don't like that at all. Is this what you guys do? The white and the starry sky. I am kind of liking the sweet sorbet. Kind of, kind of maybe a little bit. You like the sweet sorbet too? Yeah, it's just, there's something, there's something about it that works. Okay, let's just fold this card in half and see. I think it needs to be cut. Let's just see what it looks like when it's actually the right size. Are people saying much better to the, to the sweet sorbet? You cut a dozen different colors, Kimmy? Totally, yeah. Um, so for a person who doesn't like the uh, sweet sorbet too much, this is not, not such a bad thing. Okay, now here's the thought. If I cut it down a little bit, then I could put the sentiment down here. And then it wouldn't be like so in your face. Now that's Knight of Navy, so that's not going to work, but I kind of like that idea. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to try one more thing, and then I'm going to let you guys go, because, you know, I could be here all night long crafting. First of all, let's cut a backing for this that is the right size. Now this piece here is three by four and a quarter. And let's see what the sentiment looks like. Yeah, again, the white sentiment right on top of it, it's just a little bit strong. So I am going to, oh, I just realized, yeah. So this, this one here is actually a little smaller than this one. So I have to cut off quite a bit in order to have room down there. I could not use the ribbon. Maybe that's what I have to do. I think that's what I have to do. Okay, cutter. And we'll see how it fits. We're going to cut off just a little bit of this one. Bring it down to four. And then we will cut... So this should be three by four. So we'll do, I'm gonna do, what I like to do is three and three sixteenths. So three and a quarter would give it an eighth inch edge on all sides. I'm doing it one line less so that it's just a little bit less wide of an edge. See if we like it. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna do four and three sixteenths over here. So one line less than four and a quarter. The vellum piece that I put glue on earlier, it's still sitting around, sticking to things. All right. So there's that. And then I am going to actually try to stamp right on this dry emboss piece. I know it's risky, but I'm gonna do it on the back side to test it out. First, we'll go ahead and attach these layers. Got a new glue, a new white glue uh, bottle. Look how much flows out. 
And then I'm going to experiment with that stamping right on there. I'm going to use the Starry Sky ink for the sentiment. I think that's the way I want to go. And we will do the thinking of you. Just for those of you who liked the thinking of you. Okay, Cindy, you're saying sorbet for what? Shall we ask? What purpose are you interested in seeing the sorbet for? <laughs> okay, so we're going to try this on here. Now, the texture is the reverse, right? It's debossed on this side, so it might work just fine on here, but not so well on the other side. Ooh, I know. This is the thing. Okay, so here's another trick, right? The middle is going to get covered up on the front side. Ooh, I got some ink on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it in the middle and see if it does okay. Sometimes it'll just get in the grooves and be just fine. See, that's actually pretty fine. Okay, so let's attach this to the base. Oh, actually, I should stamp it first. Let's get my spacing. And we're going to put it right underneath, just to the right. Nice and firm. Ooh, got in the grooves. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, now we can really attach and we're good to go. And I so... Did you guys hear that? My phone ringing. Somebody who doesn't know I'm doing Facebook Live. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to grab my sand eraser. If you guys don't know what that is, you're going to find out. Got a little bit of ink right in here, so I'm just going to kind of sand it away. These are like a buck or two on, uh, on Amazon. Sand eraser. All right, and now I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. And I really like the simpler look without the ribbon. And the sentiment stamped on the dry embossed piece. What do you guys think? I guess when I turn it over, you might be able to answer that question. <laughs> okay. So did anybody out there see my post this week of me laying on the floor on the rug, <laughs> pointing out a glue dot on my rug? <laughs> I felt so silly doing that. But I don't know about you guys, if you have a rug in your crafting space, the glue dots just somehow end up falling on the floor. I have no idea how that happens. So bizarre. Anyway, there are my two finished cards. Very different, right? And then let's get the snowflake one. I'm not going to finish that one tonight, but you can kind of visualize, right? It would probably look really good with the um, with that color scheme. Actually, I really like that. So I'm going to have to play with that. <laughs> Your pup would have snuggled up to me on the rug. <laughs> yes, you saw the, the photo, Polly. It was a fun, a fun little whimsical uh, post. All righty. I'm going to turn the camera around. And... <laughs> you guys would just laugh if you saw this tornado of a mess off here to the left. But you're not going to see it. Just can imagine it. Okay. Actually, I could go like that. I could show you the mess. <laughs> That's the mess. Isn't that fun? I can show you the mess with my little swivelly camera there. Okay. Back we go. Hello. <laughs> Hair up. It's much more efficient when you're crafting. <laughs> this is the way I am most of the time. Hair up. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed um, enjoyed 
playing with me tonight, watching uh, with the vellum, and that you're inspired to go create some fun things with, with glue, <laughs> with adhesive, and you'll have more ideas if you buy my adhesives essential pack <laughs> and you get the free class, right? <laughs> um, is that all? You have no concept of mess? Well, you know, I, maybe I need to get you a closer look. I mean, it was perfectly clean with nothing on there before I started. Everything was neat and organized. But when I'm demonstrating, it's just like, okay, put that aside, put that aside, put that aside. <laughs> I'm so glad you enjoyed it, Cindy. And I'm glad you enjoyed it too, Jolene. Yeah, so much fun to play. I hope you're inspired to play. Uh, so let's see what else. I will keep you updated on the incentive trip goal. Of course, tomorrow is my last day. So uh, it's going to happen tomorrow night. It's going to happen tomorrow night. I know it's going to. Even if I have to buy the difference, I'm going to have to do that. Um, I think my husband's okay with it. I might be buying a whole bunch of adhesive just for me <laughs> that I'll use for weeks on end. I'm glad you like the cards, Polly. <clears throat> So uh, yeah, and uh, just keep in mind, if you are interested in my faux leather class, check it out today because there is a free gift um, if you sign up for uh, an option with kits today. And today is the deadline. Um, and let's see. Oh yes, and come to Arlington. <laughs> I made you a to-go option, haven't figured that out yet, but I do have a survey out there. If you're interested in a to-go option, comment here, let me know, and I will uh, send you the survey to, to fill out um, and let me know what your interests are. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, let's see, where do I go from here? So uh, this, will, this project will be in a blog post um, on Saturday, and so will the video. The video will be live on YouTube on Saturday. Um, and... Uh, yeah, there's that. And then also, um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I have to look at my notes. Um, I will be live here again on Facebook in two weeks. I'm going to take next week off. I may be traveling to go visit my mom next week. Um, and that's one of the reasons. The other is that I just kind of need a break, <laughs> to be very honest with you. Oh, you love the tutorial? I'm so glad. I'm so glad you love the cards. Um, Linda. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, let's see what else. Um, I'm just going to look over my notes, make sure I haven't missed anything. I announced Nell. Nell, are you out there? Did you hear that you won last week's card or two weeks ago's card? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I pretty much covered all of my topics. All right. Please feel free to share, tag, like, follow all those good things here on Facebook and on YouTube. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Um, and maybe, you know, just hanging out on social media, saying hello and, and getting down on the rug, <laughs> pointing at little glue dots. Um, anyway, you guys have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will keep you posted on the incentive trip. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Bye everybody. <laughs>